Having a strong mind is super important for how well you do in life. It's like a secret power that helps you keep going, even when things get tough. Mental strength is what helps you tackle problems, stick to your goals, and face challenges with determination, especially when your talents and skills alone aren't enough. This video is all about the key ideas in Buddhism and how they relate to 10 habits that can make your mind weaker. If we learn and use these teachings, we can start a journey to make our minds stronger and more able to bounce back from tough times. Habit number one, having a negative mindset. A negative mindset is like a heavy cloud that covers the bright sun of our inner happiness. It's a habit that makes us mentally weak because it colors everything in our life with shades of gloom and despair. When we constantly focus on the bad things, we miss out on the good stuff happening around us. It's like wearing dark glasses. Everything appears dim, even the beautiful moments. If we're always thinking negatively, we start believing that everything is bad and that success and happiness are impossible. This mental outlook becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, influencing our actions and decisions. We may become afraid to take chances or try new things because we've convinced ourselves they'll fail. To overcome a negative mindset, we can turn to the teachings of Buddhism. One key idea is mindfulness, which means paying attention to our thoughts without judging them. Instead of letting negative thoughts take over, we can acknowledge them and then choose to focus on positive aspects. It's like sweeping away the clouds to let the sunshine through. Buddhism also introduces the practice of metta or loving-kindness meditation. This involves directing warm and positive thoughts towards ourselves and others. By regularly practicing metta, we gradually shift our mindset from negativity to a more compassionate and positive outlook. The concept of impermanence in Buddhism teaches us that everything changes. The bad times will pass just like the good times. Knowing this, we can face challenges with a more resilient mindset, understanding that difficulties are not permanent. By embracing these Buddhist teachings, we empower ourselves to break free from the chains of negativity and foster a positive and resilient mind. Habit number two, complaining about things outside your control. Complaining about things outside our control is like holding on to a hot coal. It only hurts us. This habit weakens our minds because it puts our focus on what's wrong rather than on finding solutions. It's like getting stuck in quicksand. The more we complain, the deeper we sink into negativity. The teachings of Buddhism shed light on why this habit makes us mentally weak and how we can break free from its grip. When we complain, we often forget about impermanence, a big idea in Buddhism. Impermanence means that everything is always changing. Complaining tends to make us believe that things will never get better, trapping us in a cycle of discontent. Instead of seeing challenges as temporary, we make them seem like permanent problems. To overcome the habit of complaining, we can practice acceptance. This means understanding that life has ups and downs, and we can't control everything. Acceptance is like learning to dance in the rain instead of complaining about the storm. By accepting what we cannot change, we free ourselves from the heavy burden of constant complaint. Buddhism also encourages us to focus our energy on things we can control. It's like steering a boat in a storm. We may not control the weather, but we can navigate our vessel. By taking action where we have power, we move from a passive complaining mode to an active problem-solving mindset. In the teachings of Buddhism, letting go is another powerful practice. It's like releasing a balloon. We feel lighter when we let go of unnecessary burdens. Letting go doesn't mean giving up. It means releasing the tight grip on complaints and allowing space for positive change. By incorporating these Buddhist principles into our lives, we learn to approach challenges with a balanced mind, accepting the impermanence of situations and focusing our efforts where we can make a difference. In doing so, we liberate ourselves from the grip of complaints and cultivate a mental strength that propels us forward even in the face of adversity. Habit number three, not expressing yourself. Not expressing yourself is like having a treasure chest, but keeping it locked away. This habit weakens our minds because it stops us from sharing our thoughts, 
feelings, and ideas with the world. It's like trying to navigate a dark room without turning on the light. Things get confusing and overwhelming. The teachings of Buddhism guide us to understand why this habit makes us mentally weak and how we can break free from its constraints. In Buddhism, expressing oneself authentically is considered essential for building a strong foundation for mental well-being. When we hold back our thoughts and emotions, it's like bottling up a fizzy drink, the pressure builds, and eventually, it might explode. This explosion could be in the form of stress, anxiety, or a feeling of being overwhelmed because we haven't let out what's inside. The practice of right speech in Buddhism encourages us to communicate with truth, kindness, and mindfulness. It's like planting seeds of positivity. When we speak, our words can grow into a garden of understanding and connection. By aligning our words with these principles, we build a bridge between ourselves and others, fostering authentic relationships. To overcome the habit of not expressing oneself, mindfulness becomes a valuable tool. It's like a mirror. It reflects our thoughts and helps us become aware of our feelings. By being present in the moment, we can observe our thoughts without judgment and express ourselves with clarity and compassion. Expressing oneself is not just about words. It can also involve nonverbal communication, such as body language and gestures. These unspoken expressions are like a secret language, conveying our feelings and thoughts even when we don't say a word. By being aware of our nonverbal communication, we enhance our ability to express ourselves authentically. By integrating these Buddhist teachings into our lives, we learn that authentic expression is not only liberating for ourselves, but also contributes to the well-being of those around us. It's like opening a window to let fresh air in. Expressing ourselves allows the light of understanding and connection to brighten our mental space. Breaking free from a habit of not expressing ourselves, we embark on a journey towards authenticity, building a resilient and empowered mind. Habit number four, blaming others for your problems. Blaming others for our problems is like trying to run a race with a backpack full of rocks. It weighs us down and slows our progress. This habit weakens our minds because it takes away our power. It's like handing the steering wheel of our life to someone else instead of driving ourselves. The teachings of Buddhism illuminate why this habit makes us mentally weak and how we can untangle ourselves from the blame game. In Buddhism, the concept of karma teaches us that our actions have consequences. Blaming others is like ignoring this law. It's refusing to recognize that we play a role in the unfolding of our own lives. When we blame, we become like spectators rather than active participants in our journey. Taking personal responsibility is about understanding that we have the ability to shape our experiences. It's like being the captain of our ship. We may face storms, but we can navigate through them. When we blame others, it's like saying we have no control, but in reality, we do. By embracing the idea that our actions matter, we empower ourselves to make positive choices, to overcome the habit of blaming. Forgiveness plays a crucial role. Forgiveness is not about saying what others did is okay. It's about releasing ourselves from the burden of carrying resentment. It's like setting down a heavy backpack. We feel lighter and freer. Forgiving others and ourselves is a powerful step towards reclaiming our personal responsibility. Mindfulness, a key practice in Buddhism, helps us become aware of our thoughts and actions. It's like shining a light on a dark path. We can see where we're going. By being mindful, we can catch ourselves when we're tempted to blame and choose a more empowering response. This shift from blame to responsibility is like trading the rocks in our backpack for wings that help us soar. Incorporating these Buddhist teachings into our lives invites us to step into our power and take charge of our journey. Breaking free from the blame game is not just about holding others accountable. It's about recognizing our agency and ability to shape a positive and resilient mindset. Habit number five, fantasizing instead of visualizing. Fantasizing instead of visualizing is like building castles in the air. They might be beautiful but lack a solid foundation. This habit weakens our minds because it disconnects us from the reality of our present moment. It's like chasing mirages in a desert. 
we may never reach what we're yearning for. The teachings of Buddhism offer insights into why this habit makes us mentally weak and how we can shift from fantasies to visualization for a more grounded and positive mindset. Fantasies often involve unrealistic scenarios and wishful thinking. It's like expecting a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. A beautiful idea, but not based in reality. When we get lost in fantasies, it's like daydreaming while missing out on the beauty of the present moment. This habit weakens us because it can lead to disappointment when reality doesn't align with our imagined scenarios. Visualization, on the other hand, involves creating mental images of achievable goals. It's like having a treasure map. We can chart a course to reach our aspirations. Buddhism emphasizes the importance of right intention and right action which align with visualizing positive outcomes and taking practical steps toward realizing them. By grounding our aspirations in reality, we bridge the gap between dreams and achievable goals. The teachings of impermanence in Buddhism remind us that change is constant. Fantasies often involve clinging to a fixed idea of the future, while visualization adapts to the ever-shifting landscape of life. It's like riding a wave instead of trying to hold onto the shore. We move with the flow of life. By acknowledging the impermanence of all things, we develop a more flexible and resilient mindset. To overcome the habit of fantasizing, mindfulness becomes a valuable tool. It's like putting on glasses that help us see the present clearly. We become aware of our thoughts and gently guide them towards positive and realistic visualization. Mindfulness allows us to appreciate the beauty of the present moment while actively working towards our goals. Incorporating these teachings into our lives encourages us to shift from fantasies to visualization, fostering a more positive and grounded mindset. By embracing the principles of impermanence and right intention, we align our aspirations with reality, leading to a more resilient and empowered mind. And mindfulness we break free from the habit of constructing castles in the air. Visualization becomes a powerful ally, helping us manifest positive realities and navigate the journey of life with purpose and resilience. Habit number six, not making time for personal relationships. Neglecting personal relationships is like having a garden but forgetting to water the plants. Over time, everything withers away. This habit weakens our minds because humans are social beings and meaningful connections bring joy and support. It's like trying to sail a boat without wind. We might move, but it's a slow and lonely journey. The teachings of Buddhism guide us to understand why this habit makes us mentally weak and how we can cultivate stronger connections through the gift of time. Neglecting personal connections is like closing the door to a warm and welcoming home. We miss out on the comfort and support that relationships can provide. When we don't make time for our loved ones, it's like neglecting a garden. The weeds of misunderstanding and distance start to grow. This habit weakens our minds because we may feel isolated without the nourishment of love and companionship. Building and maintaining relationships requires time and effort, much like tending to a garden to make it flourish. To overcome the habit of neglecting personal relationships, we can start by being present. Presence is like sunshine for relationships. It helps them thrive. When we spend quality time with our loved ones, it's like watering the plants regularly. It nurtures the bonds and strengthens our connection. Communication is another vital aspect of nurturing relationships. It's like the wind that fills the sails of a boat. It propels us forward. Taking the time to listen and share our thoughts and feelings is like the water that keeps the garden of relationships vibrant and alive. By being open and communicative, we foster understanding and deepen our connections. Buddhism encourages us to recognize the impermanence of life, including the time we have with our loved ones. It's like savoring a delicious meal. We appreciate it more when we know it won't last forever. By understanding the fleeting nature of time, we become motivated to prioritize relationships and invest the gift of our time in those we care about. Incorporating these teachings into our lives reminds us that personal relationships are like the threads that weave the fabric of our well-being. By making time for our loved ones, we cultivate a support system that strengthens our minds and enriches our lives. 
Breaking free from the habit of neglecting personal relationships allows us to navigate the journey of life with companions by our side, making the voyage more joyful and fulfilling. Habit number seven, letting your emotions rule you. Letting emotions rule us is like being carried away by a strong river current. We lose control and direction. This habit weakens our minds because unmanaged emotions can become overwhelming and leave us astray. It's like being in a storm without a compass. We might get lost in the turbulence. The teachings of Buddhism guide us to understand why this habit makes us mentally weak and how we can develop emotional intelligence to navigate the currents of our feelings. In Buddhism, mindfulness is a powerful practice that encourages us to observe our emotions without getting swept away by them. It's like standing on the riverbank and watching the water flow. We can witness our emotions without being pulled under. When we let our emotions rule us, it's like being caught in a storm without an anchor. We get tossed around, and it becomes challenging to find our way. The concept of emotional intelligence involves recognizing, understanding, and managing our own emotions, as well as empathizing with the emotions of others. It's like having a compass in the storm. It helps us navigate through challenges and maintain a steady course. When we let our emotions control us, it's like handing over the steering wheel to a turbulent force, risking getting lost in the chaos. To overcome the habit of letting emotions rule us, mindfulness becomes a valuable ally. Mindfulness is like a sturdy boat. It helps us navigate through the waves without capsizing. By being present in the moment and observing our emotions with curiosity and non-judgment, we gain the ability to respond wisely instead of reacting impulsively. Buddhism encourages us to cultivate a balanced mind through practices like loving-kindness meditation. It's like planting seeds of compassion in our hearts. These seeds grow into a garden that allows us to respond to emotions with kindness, both towards ourselves and others. By embracing emotional intelligence, we develop a skill set that empowers us to understand, navigate, and learn from our emotions. Incorporating these teachings into our lives helps us break free from the habit of letting emotions rule us. Instead of being at the mercy of emotional storms, we become captains of our emotional ships, steering with mindfulness and compassion. By cultivating emotional intelligence, we navigate the seas of feelings with resilience, maintaining a steady course towards mental strength and well-being. Habit number eight, trying to control everything. Trying to control everything is like juggling too many balls. It's exhausting and eventually we might drop them all. This habit weakens our minds because it sets us up for frustration and disappointment. It's like attempting to catch the wind impossible and frustrating. The teachings of Buddhism guide us to understand why this habit makes us mentally weak and how we can find empowerment in the paradox of surrendering control. In Buddhism, the concept of non-attachment teaches us to let go of the illusion of control. It's like realizing we can't hold on to the clouds. They are always changing and shifting. When we try to control everything, it's like trying to hold on to water. It slips through our fingers, leaving us feeling powerless. Surrendering control doesn't mean giving up. Instead, it means recognizing the limits of our influence. It's like planting seeds in a garden. We nurture them, but we can't control the weather. The weather might bring rain or shine, but our role is to tend to the garden with care. When we accept that some things are beyond our control, we free ourselves from the constant struggle, much like releasing a tightly clenched fist. To overcome the habit of trying to control everything, mindfulness becomes our ally. Mindfulness is like a steady anchor. It keeps us grounded in the present moment. By focusing on what we can influence and letting go of the rest, we navigate the seas of uncertainty with grace and resilience. Buddhism encourages us to embrace the paradox that surrendering control leads to true empowerment. It's like realizing that by loosening our grip, we gain the strength to face life's challenges. When we surrender the need to control, it's like opening our hands to receive what life has to offer, rather than clinging to our preconceived notions. Incorporating these teachings into our lives invites us to release the burden of trying to control everything. By surrendering the illusion of control, 
we paradoxically find empowerment, like a sail catching the wind, propelling us forward with a sense of freedom. Breaking free from a habit of micromanaging every aspect of life, we discover the strength that comes from embracing the ebb and flow of existence. Habit number nine, dwelling on the past. Dwelling on the past is like carrying a heavy backpack full of old stuff. It slows us down and makes the journey harder. This habit weakens our minds because it keeps us stuck in what's already happened, preventing us from fully enjoying the present or looking forward to the future. It's like trying to drive a car while constantly looking in the rearview mirror. We're likely to miss what's ahead. The teachings of Buddhism help us understand why dwelling on the past makes us mentally weak and how we can break free from these chains. In Buddhism, the practice of mindfulness teaches us to be present in the here and now. It's like opening the windows to let in fresh air. It clears out the stuffiness of dwelling on the past. When we dwell on what's behind us, it's like trying to walk backward. We might stumble and lose our way. By letting go of the past, we create space for new experiences and opportunities. Dwelling on the past also ties us to old wounds and grievances. It's like keeping a wound covered in a bandage long after it is healed. It hinders us from fully embracing life. Buddhism encourages us to practice forgiveness, not just for others, but also for ourselves. Forgiveness is like opening the door to release the past. It allows us to step into the present unburdened. The teachings of impermanence in Buddhism remind us that everything changes. It's like watching a river flow. The water never stays the same. When we cling to the past, it's like trying to freeze the river. It becomes stagnant and loses its vitality. By acknowledging the impermanence of all things, we free ourselves from the chains that bind us to past experiences. To overcome the habit of dwelling on the past, self-compassion is crucial. It's like offering a kind word to a friend in need. We deserve the same kindness. By treating ourselves with compassion and understanding, we break free from the self-imposed prison of regret and guilt. The past becomes a teacher rather than a jailer. Incorporating these teachings into our lives empowers us to let go of the chains that bind us to the past. By embracing mindfulness, forgiveness, and self-compassion, we create a path towards liberation. Breaking free from a habit of dwelling on the past allows us to step into the present with lightness and openness, ready to embrace the unfolding moments of our lives. Habit number 10. Worrying about what others say and do. Worrying about what others say and do is like carrying around a heavy backpack filled with other people's thoughts. It burdens our minds and hinders our authenticity. This habit weakens us because it ties our self-worth to external opinions, like sailing a boat that's tossed around by every passing wave. The teachings of Buddhism offer insights into why this habit makes us mentally weak and how we can liberate ourselves from the shackles of constant judgment. In Buddhism, the practice of equanimity encourages us to remain balanced amidst the changing tides of praise and criticism. It's like standing on solid ground while the winds of opinions blow. We stay steady. When we worry too much about what others say, it's like building our house on shaky ground. It becomes vulnerable to every passing storm. By cultivating equanimity, we develop resilience in the face of external judgments. Judging ourselves based on others' opinions is like letting someone else hold the mirror. We see ourselves through their eyes, not our own. Buddhism teaches the importance of self-acceptance and authenticity. It's like wearing our favorite clothes instead of trying to fit into someone else's wardrobe. We express ourselves genuinely. By letting go of the need for constant approval, we break free from the limitations imposed by others' expectations. Mindfulness, a central theme in Buddhism, helps us become aware of our thoughts and reactions. When we worry about what others say, it's like being lost in a maze of opinions. Mindfulness acts as a guiding light, helping us find our way back to our true selves. By being present in the moment, we can observe these worries without getting entangled in them. To overcome the habit of worrying about others' opinions, self-love becomes a powerful antidote. It's like planting seeds of kindness within ourselves. These seeds grow into a garden of self-acceptance. 
By recognizing our intrinsic worth and embracing our unique qualities, we build a shield against the arrows of external judgments. Incorporating these teachings into our lives liberates us from the mental weakness tied to worrying about what others say and do. By practicing equanimity, embracing authenticity, and cultivating self-love, we break free from the chains that bind us to external opinions. Breaking that habit of constant judgment allows us to navigate our own course, steering towards a life guided by inner strength and authenticity. The teachings of Buddhism provide a comprehensive guide to overcoming habits that make us mentally weak. By weaving mindfulness, compassion, and wisdom into the fabric of our daily lives, we can transcend negative patterns and cultivate enduring mental strength. This exploration serves as an invitation to embark on a transformative journey, integrating the profound teachings of Buddhism into the tapestry of our existence. May the wisdom of these teachings illuminate the path to a resilient and empowered mind, inspiring a life filled with purpose, compassion, and joy.